ever dreamt of exploring the world while excelling in your career. This dream of dreams sits on a lot of our minds, but it's hard to accomplish. And it's especially hard to accomplish if you cannot hold your focus. Because working remote is not easier than working in the office, and that's where a lot of people fail. So you have to be very efficient at what you do to succeed. And in this video, I'm gonna help you achieve intense focus and give you a lot of tools so focus is no longer your problem. In the heart of chaos, you have to find your sanctuary. And what I mean by this is even when things are chaotic around you, you can still achieve focus. Now for myself, I've been traveling for quite some time and I like to think I can be productive anywhere from on an airplane to a bus in a noisy cafe, but I haven't always been this way. I had to work up to it and it is a skill that you can practice and improve. I truly think so, but you don't get there overnight. You have to build that muscle over time. And so trying to find that quiet, serene place in a library, make sure that you have a hotel that has good internet and you can work in hotel room. And even today, I prefer working in quiet places. So I, I don't necessarily enjoy working in noisy areas, but if I need to, I can. And I, I can work anywhere and be productive. And that mindset and that confidence helps me travel easier. And when we are traveling, we can basically hotel or stay anywhere. And I can transform that small little workspace or condo or apartment or rental ho or even hotel room into a productive environment at will and on the go. So with that said, it's important, at least starting off, to find environments that are going to be quiet. Plan ahead and make sure that you're going to have those environments. You can steadily, maybe even outside, practice working in noisier environments. Over time, if you're used to working in a closed office, work in an open office. Work around other people. Start working around places that are not super quiet and just see how well you can hold your focus and keep working. And over time, you'll find you're able to hold your focus deeper and longer in those noisy environments than you were prior. Further, ergonomics of some of your office space, uncomfortable chairs, things that could be small little irks in trying to distract your attention or make it harder to focus on what you're trying to do, remove those. Try to make it as comfortable as possible before you start working and have that environment. This is easier to do, obviously, if you have a hotel room or somewhere you're gonna be repeating if you're staying somewhere for a week, you know, want, make that environment comfortable and unique to you. Change the chair height to be the proper chair height that you need and adjust the back support and make sure the table is the correct height that you need. There is no correct work environment. What really is going to be dependent is what you feel is the correct work environment. And if you can achieve focus there, then it's the correct environment. So over time, steadily adapt those work environments and make yourself a little uncomfortable and with the uncomfort will gradually improve your ability to focus on your tasks. Of course in environments where it's going to be noisy, people are going to be asking you questions, people are going to be on their phones around you, things are going to be happening. These are all things that will grab your attention randomly and take your focus off of what you're doing. And that is a big no-no because your focus has a singular focal point and you cannot really change that without changing context. So if you start thinking about the environment around you, whatever task you're working on has kind of reset and trying to get back to that task, it's going to take some time to start regaining that focus. Now let's talk about focus. What is focus anyway? The interesting thing about the human brain and really just brains in general is it can really only focus on one thing, a singular point of contact. And when you try to think of something else, all of the things that you're thinking about that singular thing has to be stored and switched over to something else. And so you can imagine it takes time. 
and you're gonna have to start thinking about things. You're gonna have to warm up to something again. And so literally, if you're trying to do a mathematical problem and a squirrel runs across the road and you look at that squirrel and start thinking about the squirrel, you're gonna lose everything from the math that you are doing and you'll probably have to start over unless you wrote, wrote it down and have in good detail everything you were doing back up to that point. And even then, reading all that is gonna take some time. And so you can see if you're having a lot of squirrel moments and things taking away your focus, you're going to find extremely hard to be productive on anything you do. And if you're having trouble with this while working in the office or working at home, it's going to be even harder to do on travel because travel is not easy. But I believe in you. And I know if you put enough time and attention into practicing and improving your focus with the things I covered in this video, you'll be much more productive in no time. Navigate your day like a seasoned traveler. Let's talk about how to schedule and plan your day. First of all, when I've traveled in the past, I often work in such a way my work is isolated in its own time slots and I work straight through so I don't get any distractions while I'm working. When I'm working, my one focus is to be productive as possible and to remove distractions and focus on that work day. And so it helps to make sure that work day is isolated, but it doesn't mean it needs to be isolated from your adventure. Often a work day takes about half your day. So if you plan your day well, you still have the second part of the day to go out in an adventure. Of course, this is gonna make you tired. So if you have problems with that, I have a energy video that you can check out and I'll pop up on the screen here. But once you have the energy you need, the only thing left is making sure that you can achieve focus. Because I live in Washington State, which is PST time, one nice thing is when I travel to Europe or Africa is that the workday is reversed in a way that I can work during the night and have the day free. Because obviously you can do more during the daytime than at the nighttime and you just have to sacrifice some night life, which I guess for me, I'm okay with that. And there's so much to explore during the day. And so this works really well for me. And Asia is a little bit harder. I've done it before, but you really have to. I mean, this is focused to a different level and I would not advise anyone to just jump into this kind of thing. But once you're getting better, you can work in Asia, which is where you start working during the graveyard. It's usually around midnight or around that time and working through the night. And when you get off of work, you have the initial part of the day to do things and then you'll have to go to sleep in the afternoon and wake up for work again and your morning will be the night time for everyone else. And another thing I tend to battle with is jet lag. Never try to fly somewhere that is across a bunch of time zones and then plan to work that night or that day because as soon as you get there you're going to be struggling with jet lag. You usually want a day or two. For me it takes maybe two to three days to get over jet lag and, and uh, by the second day it's no problem. So at least have some clearance of one day before jumping into work. Otherwise, what I'll do is drink some coffee or an energy drink to stay awake. I rarely drink energy drinks, but this is an occasion that I need to power through and make sure I can be productive. But it's important to work up to being able to do these things. Make sure you take small baby steps and those steps once you're feeling confident can lead to a longer trip so make sure you have shorter trips ultimately what i found is most important is being able to make sure you're working in the same time zone as as all your co-workers and plan around that that's going to be step number one step number two make sure that you have a focus block if you're planning on taking some kind of shuttle or working in some kind of cafe and then going to a museum in between or trying to do anything else you're probably it's you're either to another level that i'm not used to or it's going to be a disaster so my best advice is to make sure that your work hours your eight to nine our block of work is isolated from everything else and you can have that time to focus on your work and nothing else and plan your day around that. 
and make sure that you're to your work environment like a half hour or an hour ahead so that you can set up and start getting ready for work. Also, because it's travel, you have a whole bunch of randomness that can happen. Things can go wrong. So making that hour buffer period in your schedule, just in case things go wrong or you're running late, it gives you that time to still show up to work on time. And outside that focus block, you can take the entire time and explore, which is wonderful. You just have to make sure that you're balancing your energy levels. And if you are running low on energy and you need to take a break, take it. Your main thing is focusing on having enough energy for work. You can take a day off or two of exploring in order to commit to your work. One nice thing that I want to get across is you're buying extra time because you are working. You're making money while traveling and this is going to enable you to be able to travel longer so it doesn't need to be a full day of exploration you can be spreading out the things you're doing across longer amounts of time in exchange you have to keep up your promise to your employer of your productivity in a world of noise find your inner silence and conquer your distractions today there is more distractions than ever there's TikTok. Instagram, Facebook, and all these different social media. There's your family, there's text messages, there's calls you have to do, there's emails, and double that because you probably have this all coming from work as well. And this could all be happening while on travel. And it could even just make your life hard while you're not on travel. It's even worse when you're on travel because you already have so much more going on. If this is providing too much of distraction, it's going to be game over. I used to have a hard time with this and I used to almost get this squirrel effect being a squirrel would run across and I would just put my attention to that and lose my focus on whatever I was doing. And so maybe I get a new text message. I have to check what that text message is or someone instant messages me. I have to see what that message is. Every single time I move my focus, I lose it on the task at hand. And this destroys my ability to focus and just waste so much of my potential productivity time. So I started implementing a digital detox and I even do this for work as well. So when I have focus periods and I know I need to be focusing, I make sure to set my phone on silent, set it aside. I use my operating system to turn off notifications. I go to my Microsoft Teams Instant Messenger. I turn off notifications from that. I make sure nothing pops up on my screen while I am focusing. And I will focus on the thing I am trying to do until it is done. Or I have a meeting, but I planned around my meetings. As I mentioned earlier, you gotta plan your day. And so I have focus blocks to focus, and that is all I am doing. And when that block of time is done, then I go and check my messages. I check my emails, I might check my phone, make sure I didn't miss anything. My focus has come to an end and I am done with what I've tried to achieve. So you have to ask yourself, what in your day is distracting you. For everyone, it could be a little bit different. If you find you are focusing on something and something takes it away, being email or instant message, whatever, you're watching a TV show, it could be anything. If your focus is being taken away, find that thing and eliminate it. Make sure that during your focus time, nothing can take your focus away. I have to say one nice thing about being out of an office is it's much easier to focus at home aside from family. So some people may have to contend with family. While this doesn't necessarily apply to me other than my wife and we both are focusing usually at the same time because she has work too so we're working both at the same time. Some of you may have kids or pets that are providing constant need for attention and so trying to eliminate those by establishing an understanding or boundaries to ensure that while you're working, when this door is closed, I am focusing. And so 
by establishing rules such as when this door is closed I am focusing and so please don't open that door unless it's an emergency because I need to keep my focus and when I am done focusing or I am taking a break I will open the door and see how things are. If you need anything please leave a note or something and I'll make sure I see it as soon as I come out my door. These are simple rules that you can use to make sure that you are establishing boundaries to prevent things from distracting you. And this could be a little bit tricky to be honest while you're traveling, especially with the kids. Because often in hotel rooms and apartments and condos you may not always have doors. But you might have to get a little clever with it in a way to make sure that if you've established these boundaries at home, we're going to continue to do it on travel. Once your family has adjusted to those boundaries and are accustomed to those boundaries, they need to continue to be enforced even while on travel to make sure that you can continue to focus because that focus is so precious to being productivity. And on top of that, you have to feel empowered to say no to things like instant messages. Often today, I feel everyone feels an instant message or a call it means something urgent. Sometimes it does, but often it doesn't. So trying to make sure that you can have that detox of all those things that want to grab your attention and say urgent, 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 and remove it from the immediate time and focus and only have the world of what task you're focusing on for a set amount of time. And when that task is done, then you check text messages and you check your instant messages and you'll find that the world continues to turn. A 20 to 30 minute block is really not that long to put things on hold for communication in the long run if it makes you productive because ultimately the more productive you are and the more work you can get done and the better you're able to hold your focus you'll be able to achieve a lot more in your career than trying to respond to messages as fast as you can. Now we're going to harness the ticking clock to be more productive. Up to this point, we've been talking about tasks and making sure you have dedicated time to focus. Let's get into that a little bit more and talk about how to train that focus and how long those focus periods should be. One cool technique that I learned about some time ago and really got me into these focus periods is the Pomodoro technique. And for me, this was the training wheels that I needed to start practicing and building my focus. And so with the Pomodoro technique, which is where you work 25 minutes on a specific task that you planned ahead of time, and then you take five minutes break, and then you can start another Pomodoro. And the goal would be to try and achieve as many Pomodoros in a day as you can and break down your work in a way that it can be split into a number of Pomodoros. So if you have a project, this project is going to take me 30 Pomodoros and be able to split it into those time chunks and, and have a number of Pomodoros. And so once you understand how many Pomodoros a project is going to be able to complete, you know roughly around the time it's going to be complete. Now that's making a huge assumption that you're super great at estimating how many Pomodoro something is going to take. Obviously, being a human, we're fairly flawed in such a way that our estimation capability is not that great. But the more you practice, the better you'll get. And Pomodoro is just a great thing to start off with and it's a great training tool for me to start building that focus. And you can start using it now in the office and see if you can do one Pomodoro where you remove all distractions and try to accomplish the thing that you're trying to do. And once you can do that consistently, try it at home. And once you can do that consistently, try it in a noisy coffee shop. And once you can do that consistently, try it on travel and see how many Pomodoros you have. Now you have a nice little rubric of how many Pomodoros you normally can achieve in a work environment in an office environment and try to say I need to make sure I can consistently do this mean Pomodoro's while on travel too and what's great about this is you have some kind of bar a metric for yourself to hold to and improve on and since it's a defined amount of time I gave myself 25 minutes for this task why did I not achieve it or maybe I, un I achieved it much earlier than 25 minutes you can start getting a better idea of 
how much you can achieve in that 25 minutes amount of time and see what went well, what didn't go well, what kind of skills you might be able to improve on, what kind of things may have distracted you. It gives you all sorts of tools to analyze the situation and continue to improve on. And so this is just such a great hack in life and building focus that you can use to really be critical about your ability and how much you can get done in one Pomodoro or really set amount of time. Because once I got used to Pomodoro technique, I started hacking it and basically I no longer need to use Pomodoros in such a way. And generally I'm fairly comfortable to just basically say I'm gonna do this task and I'm gonna focus on it until it's done. And that task shouldn't be more than an hour. So. I don't really just say it's going to 25 minutes and just end it anymore because I have a lot of confidence in my ability to focus and be super productive. So I usually just give myself an hour chunk and up to an hour and I say I'm going to get this thing done in that hour and I'm not going to step away from the thing I'm doing until it's done. And once the hour is done or once I've finished the thing I'm trying to achieve in that hour, then I'll you know, check my instant messages, I'll check my email, I'll get back to people that may have texted me. This is my time to break focus and look at other things, maybe spend a half hour block on that, and then I'm going to do another hour block. Or maybe I have a meeting and then I'm gonna do an hour block after that. And so this is just a super great thing that I kind of graduated to, and you can use it or lose it once you start getting the hang of doing Pomodoros. And when you start off, with trying to do Pomodoros, one important thing is to achieve, to celebrate those small victories that you have when you completely focus on a task and then get it done in one Pomodoro. And keep on celebrating with every single one and trying to achieve more Pomodoros in a day. You'll find your productivity will just skyrocket. You'll find as you're able to do more and more Pomodoros successively, more and more Pomodoros in a day, the more productive you'll be and you have a better definitive block of how much work you can get done in your day. And you'll have to experiment around with what works for you of how much rest. And by rest, I'm really just talking about how much time you're not focusing. Really checking emails, you know, making phone calls. All these things are not focus related things. Well, obviously, when you're typing to someone, you're focused, but then you know, there's, you're probably checking an email right after that, you're checking a web page. Your focus could be all over the place. So this is a kind of a defined task of just kind of keeping up with communication, but this is kind of separate. And usually I, I think not too many people need focus on that, but you have to do it. You have to communicate with your coworkers. You have to keep caught up with the beat of the normal work day. And so maybe adjust that to what you need. 30 minutes, 20 minutes. You have to have a cutoff though, because you also have to protect your focus time. Because if you're not focusing, you're not being productive for your employer. And so with that said, I myself tend to get a lot of messages. I get a lot of noise. I get a lot of communication and, and often it can be overwhelming. And if I just sat and responded to everything, I could probably spend my entire work day doing just that. However, I need to be productive. I need to get stuff done. So I give myself a cutoff being after 30 minutes of communication or time to respond to things. I will try and get through as much as I can and using kind of a Pomodoro technique for this time of communication, being tasked a task to just get caught up with all my communication channels. And then after that done, 30 minutes is done. I need to start my next our focus block and move on to that and so this is just something that has been great for me in achieving those high focus periods and i hope it's great for you as well when you give it a try with all this said you'll find you need to adjust certain things to you the pomodoro is kind of a strict unit of measurement of focus and eventually maybe you graduate to what i do and i don't suggest graduate too early this is something that once you can do pomodoros then you don't really need the pomodoro training wheels anymore but you gotta realize saying i'm going to get something done in one focus period is a lot and so the way i like to always feel is putting my a little pressure on myself maybe not pressure maybe a little bit of challenge and so i will take a chunk of work and really challenge myself can i get this done in one hour or 30 minutes or whatever your dedicated focus time is. 
and I really try hard to find all the skills and the techniques and things for me to really dive deep and see how fast I can get this done. And what's great is since I am challenging myself, I'm always feeling it's kind of a race. And if I, if I ghost race against myself, I want to beat myself that I did last time. And I want to continue to get faster. And you will find you're able to just continue to get faster and faster at achieving your tasks and be much more efficient. And the focus block really gives you a nice tool to measure how you're doing and what is working and what isn't. Ultimately, balancing work and adventure is totally achievable and I believe you can do it. Remember this, with dedication and strategy, you can thrive in both worlds. So go forth, fellow adventurers, and conquer your dreams while excelling in your work. And if you're looking for some beginner ideas of how to balance that work and play environment. Check out this next video. I'm going to link to the side here and it goes into a lot more detail of how we were able to make it work, how we were able to plan it, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Until next time.